So we continue our study of tensors and we ask the question as to how we can understand what a tensor does. Okay. To understand this, uh, let's approach the question a little differently. Let's start by looking at a vector. Okay. So here's a vector A and let's say I have a coordinate system which is drawn like this E1, E2. So clearly the components of A in this coordinate system, let me call this coordinate system P. So this is going to be, I am only considering a two dimensional case, uh, will be some column vector like this A1, A2. So that's okay, nothing very incredibly different here. But suppose I have a different coordinate system now, which I am going to draw in green and it has unit vectors E1 and E2 prime. Now in this case, and let me call this coordinate system S, then clearly A in S is going to be A1 prime and 0, because A has no component along E2 prime, right. So now clearly the, co the components of A in P are you know, more complicated than the components of A in S. Okay. So the question is, can this happen for a mat for a tensor also? Well, consider a tensor. Well, and let's consider some coordinate system P, and in this coordinate system, let the tensor A have the components, all components, 0, 0, A33, 0, 0. Okay. So this is in this coordinate system P, P, E, I. Now the question is, can we find a coordinate system S, the origin does not really matter for the moment, such that the matrix of A in S is simply diagonal. Okay, so is this possible? That's the question. Uh, why is it nice to have a diagonal uh, representation of A in S? Well, for the simple reason that in S, A, if it operates on any of the unit vectors of S, it is simply A i well into e i and i am going to write something over here no sum what it means is here it i is a free index here i is a repeated index so obviously the summation convention is not being followed and this no sum indicates that that i am suspending summation conven convention in this equation so what we have over here is that this tensor a when looked at from this coordinate system S is actually only a stretching of the unit vectors E i prime. So this complicated this complicated matrix of A is actually very simple. So A's operation is very simple. So the question is when can we find a coordinate system where this is possible? And that answer is obtained by st studying so called principal values and principal vectors of the tensor. So here is the definition. A tensor A has a principal value lambda with associated principal va vector V if A V is lambda V. Okay, what is that? What am I trying to say here? Is that I have a tensor A which is a black box and I have some vector V which enters A and comes out only simply scaled, then this is my principal vector associated with this principal value. Okay. And you will see that I have normalized this, I uh, will come to that in a second. This is the idea is the same as that of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. 
in dynamics we tend to use principal values and principal vectors so i am simply using that terminology but it is the same exactly the same as eigen values and eigen vectors okay now it is clearly if if v is a principal vector then any multiplication of v by a constant still remains a principal vector right so that's clear so a times cv is simply lambda times cv right so that's this and that is the reason why i have normalized it over there okay because otherwise it is not unique i have done all this discussion of principal values and principal vectors and i have never once mentioned a coordinate system that means the principal pair which consists of a principal value and a principal vector is independent of the coordinate system that you are working on okay now that's very important because it helps us answer the following question how do you find the principal pair for a given tensor well since it does not depend on the coordinate system pick your favorite coordinate system find the matrix of a in that coordinate system and simply find the matrix the eigen values and eigen vectors of the matrix a in p okay let's remind ourselves about what this means so suppose i have a matrix suppose i began with a tensor i picked my coordinate system p some coordinate system okay so we pick this and then we find the matrix of p of a in p okay and now the question is simply to find the eigen values and eigen vectors of this matrix which will be the principal values and principal vectors of the tensor so how do we do that well the steps were find the determinant of okay <coughs> okay set it equal to 0 and this will give you three roots which we call lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 okay why only three well i am considering only 3 by 3 matrices why only 3 by 3 matrix because my ten my original tensor a operates only on three dimensional vectors so anyway so this is what you did uh, do you know what this is that is simply the identity tensor so this just for those of you who might get confused this is simply 1 1 1 and zeros everywhere else okay <coughs> so this was the st first step and you get three roots and these are my principal values okay great and then what do you do then you simply by the way you are uh, you are guaranteed three roots why are you guaranteed three roots so write that down guaranteed from the fundamental theorem of algebra of course some of these roots could be complex what you are guaranteed three roots then what do you do the steps stage 2 was that you simply solve this equation operating on some vector vi and this will give you the eigen vectors or the provides you the principal vector for lambda i okay so that was the process and uh, if you have not followed i recommend that you go back and uh, remind yourself of that okay so now we know that we can how to find the principal values and principal vectors given any tensor a okay all right so what are the properties now as i have 
So consider, as I said, consider a tensor on 3D vectors because it's a 3D vector. Therefore, this the matrix of A is a 3 by 3 matrix. Now, given that we have just seen that because of the process by which we find the principal va values, you are guaranteed three roots. You are guaranteed three principal values lambda i. Of course, what will happen now is so let's kind of and out of these out of these three principal values you have two choices all of them could be real or one could be real and you will have and the other two are complex conjugates of each other so let's kind of draw a flow chart okay so you have a and you have two options either lambda 1 okay let's 3 real lambda lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 or 1 real okay lambda 1 and lambda 2 is a plus okay let me write it little more legibly lambda 2 and 3 are a plus minus i b okay so those two options it is possible that out of these all of all the real again uh, all the real principal values are different it is possible that two are different and one is repeated and it is also possible that all of them repeat okay in this case of course all three are going to be different now for each let's recall for each choice of lambda you could solve this equation for a principal vector that means for every real lambda there is a real principal vector v okay now what that means is that you will always have at least one real v because you are guaranteed at least one real vector one real principal value okay all right but what you are not guaranteed is that so in this case for example you will get three principal vectors v1 v2 v3 corresponding to lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 okay let's use colored pen since we have that possibility here lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 well in this case lambda 1 will give me v1 but lambda 2 and lambda 3 are the same so at most so yeah at least i will be given i will get v2 but will i get a v3 that's not clear i may or i may not okay so these two are guaranteed and maybe there will be a v3 not sure over here i will i am guaranteed v1 but v2 v3 not sure okay that's what i say over here a repeated lambda may not have as many v so over here is repeated twice but i may or may not have two associated principal vectors here repeated thrice i may or may not have three principal vectors okay finally if a both a and its transpose have the same principal values but they do not have the same associated principal vector the same principal value is easy to see we are finding the principal values by solving for this determinant and this determinant does not change if you choose a transpose over here great now let me show you some examples